Now, our, our friend over at X Play, Adam Sessler, he Ooh. caused some waves lately in the fanboy universe over the show's some? review of. Uh, some waves? Quite a few waves <laughs> over his review of Kill Zone 2. Listen to this. No matter what, it's never enough. Five out of five, huh? Yet, no matter how badass it looks, you could hear it in Adam and Morgan's voice that they were almost upset that the game is as good as it is. Joe, you delusional. <laughs> um, this is just astounding. You apparently listened to my VO more than I did when I was actually delivering it, and you actually think that I did that to present a subliminal message to try to message out to all the people out there that somehow Killzone 2 isn't as good as other games that are exclusive to the Xbox 360? You think I have that much time and interest on my hands? Joe, only you do, because you're lonely. Ladies and gentlemen, brought to us today by Microsoft, Adam Sessler is here. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm fine. What happened? Adam, why? We'll get to Killzone, but why do you hate Sony so much? Why can't you just like like I, games I because know. they're games? I know. I, sh I should have given them that six out of five because yeah. I was apparently supposed. Yeah, because there was no no more room. I mean, so those who didn't see it, you guys gave Killzone a five out of five. Yeah, Killzone glowing two. five. Yeah, a, a glowing five, and people didn't think that that was good enough. Exactly. Apparently, we have developed such a reputation as hating PS3 games, which is funny since Resistance, Resistance Two, and Little Big Planet, among other exclusives to the PS3, have also received fives out of us. But there seems to be this kind of just, you know, siege mentality and self-loathing among certain PS3 fanboys out there that, you know, if they're not getting smacked, they're not alive. Right. Well, you did hate on Lair, and that was exclusive, right? Yes. Exactly. Exclusively uh, bad. It was, it was terrible, but, yeah. all right, so let's let's talk about Killzone 2. I, for, well, actually, no, let me get back to you responding to the fanboys, mm -hmm. because why would you do that? You know you're only throwing meat in the cage at that point. Like, Well, you know what, but I have to say that I was shocked at some of the responses it got, because a lot of people were saying, I've always thought this. And they were coming out board saying, we need to stop this. I don't expect this to actually happen in the long term, but maybe sure. it was some type of a wake-up call. Uh, it was really just a point of such ultimate exhaustion and frustration, because obviously we care about what we you know, of course, do on the show, of and we love to see it discussed appropriately. And it's really just a small group of people <laughs> right. that are very, very loud that are really ruining it for everyone else. Well, and, and, but in true Sessler form, if I may, uh, I love that you say we need to raise the level of discourse around here, and then you advise that people stick their own members into their mouths. Well, all I, in the I, same, I, all in the same clip. It's that. a little a little bit of Obama, a little of, you know, deep throat. So, <laughs> you say a little bit of Palin. I'm like, that's allegedly. Um, but let's let's talk about Killzone 2 now because I spent a couple hours with it and, and, and I'm admitting it right now, like, I, I cannot right. I cannot give a, any sort of verdict on right. the game only having played it for a couple hours. But I thought, okay, it's gorgeous. The sound was awesome. But it felt like the controls, I, was, I felt like I was playing it underwater. It felt like uh, like the giant pie that I was in. I felt like I was trying to navigate the game and it was a little muddy. I mean, that was my, my knee-jerk reaction, but you love this thing. I, I love how the pie analogy is only one that you and Olivia can ever right, use exactly. when reviewing a video exactly. game. Yeah. Uh, it's irrefutable. Now, I, just to say, I did not do the review myself. I played the game quite extensively, but uh, Mr. Shark did the review, right. and you can read it up on our site. Um, uh, he did note that there was a slight, an ever so slight delay that I think only he could necessarily notice. There was a sense of weight in the game, both to the guns that you're using and to the objects around you, that may have given some of that sense that you know it was moving a little bit slowly. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked the campaign, that we really found the multiplayer to be the real singing praises part of the game. The, yeah, let's the, focus on that, because I know that one of the cons was that, hey, there's no co-op here, the, the campaign was, it, was it, kind of average. And, and, and that's where a lot of the fanboys were like, how dare you say that? We're not saying that the game is bad because it doesn't have co-op. It was that the game, by its nature, would have been perfect for yeah. co-op. We did not ding it for it, but we said, wow, you know, it's just... It's, Especially it's, it's when there's interactions, show. like your AI's helping you up a ledge right. and you help them up. It seemed like they were almost going that route, like they wanted you know, to make a co-op. I, I can't speak for Guerrilla Games, but sure. I would not be surprised if at one point they get intended to have two or maybe four player co-op. Sure. But you know how hard, it's very hard to make that, and they wanted to make a good game, not a four-player right. game. And so with that said, with the, with, with, the, with the slight few negatives about Killzone 2 out of the way, sell me on the multiplayer. Why is this thing the five out of five? Um, it's a very, very, and, and this is where I haven't played as much as Mr. Shark, I'll just say that. It's very dynamic, and it really benefits you to invest yourself in it. It has a leveling up system, but the way that it, that it branches and the way that it rewards you for really kind of sticking with it and trying to build out your character and the way that it really you know, forces team play as the right. Call of Duty 4. One part I think that is great is that there's something, I believe it's called prestige in the game that teams have. And before matches, you can bet some of your team's prestige against another. Oh, nice. There's some very, very small but innovative ways. Right. And the fact that like, the, the modes change in real time, you're not exactly. bouncing out of the map. And... So more, it, it's, it's what uh, Call of Duty 4 had, 
but with all the improvements you would expect to have at this day and age in, in okay, LA Okay, so, so final word, because we're, we're way out of time, but I, I love chatting with you. Does the game live up to the hype? What we saw years ago, that, that little clip that everybody called BS on, does this live up to what we were promised? Um, it's a great game. If it came out a year, year and a half ago, it would have completely met the hype, but expectation, it, it meets expectations. I'll, I'll put it that way. Do you hate Sony? I love everyone. <laughs> It's a five out of five. Everybody settle the hell down. Yes. Adam, thank you for coming on, dude. I really All appreciate right. it. And I, I do appreciate the response to the fanboys as well. That was All right. Thank We're you back. for taking one for the team.